Hello, and welcome to Way Back When, with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's third Friday family history show with Nancy and Lisa, the mother-daughter travel team on the Love Your Park store and publishers of Big Blend Radio and TV magazine, as well as Parks and Travel magazine. So September 2020, which is really the whole year of 2020, not just September, uh, marks the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the Mayflower. It is the English merchant ship that used to, you know, transport goods like wine and, you know, things like really good stuff like that. <laughs> but then uh, turned around and ended up bringing 102 English passengers and crew uh, up to America. What well, what was the New World of America? Uh, so they arrived in Plymouth Harbor, Massachusetts. And on today's show, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the history of the ship and researching the family history of the crew and the people that were on board. And I'm sure there were more than uh, English uh, uh, crew or uh, passengers because they were in Holland as well. So uh, we have two of our regular Big Blend family history expert contributors joining us to share this epic story that really links England, Holland, and America and other countries, spans 400 years of history, and really connects millions of people when you think about the formation of America. Um, we're also going to discuss some of the routes, travel, and special events that commemorate this 400-year anniversary. So welcome back, Holly Hansen. Holly is, Holly is the uh, founder of FamilyHistoryExpos.com. Welcome back, Miss Holly. How are you doing? Hey, I'm happy. Thank you so much. It's fun to be together on this crisp uh, December morning. I know. It is crispy. It is crispy. A little here chilly. In Yuma, Arizona, and I'm thinking, like, come on, the Mayflower could come down the Colorado River, right? Come greet us here. <laughs> Get a <board. laughs> They used to have those big paddle wheels that would come through here, but it's, uh, you know, now it's a little different. Now we get to go in kayaks and canoes, <laughs> but I'm just thinking about going out there. We're going to be celebrating uh, the annual Bird Nature History Festival, and everyone's going to get out in a canoe in January, and I'm like, I don't know. I got to take my coffee. <laughs> with it's going to be cold. <laughs> I know, and you're up in Utah, so that, that's a little brisk up there. Uh, our, our second guest here is Glenn Burrows over in, in Chile, Norfolk, England, and he is the owner of Norfolk Tours in England, and he takes people around to, uh, to the places where their ancestors lived and uh, worked, and you can keep up with Glenn at norfolk-tours.co.uk. So welcome back, Glenn. How are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, it's nice, and, uh, nice and fresh air as well, so it's all good. You don't have the lazy wind <laughs> happening yet? No, no, the lazy, the lazy wind, it was definitely blowing the other day when I was on the North Norfolk coast. It was extremely lazy. It went straight through me. Oh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, <laughs> not very good. But there, yeah, today is quite pleasant. I, I, you know, it's just interesting talking about 400 years of history. And I know that there were, you know, the Mayflower wasn't, it wasn't really originally to be the Mayflower that came over. So I know that this links different countries. Uh, there's different dates all over the place on the internet, but um, this is really about, you know, people finding, discovering their roots and connecting countries again, just Glenn, like we've talked about between Kentucky and Norfolk uh, with Abraham Lincoln's history. So it's very interesting to have these American English connections again. Uh, but let's, uh, and everyone, uh, Glenn and Holly have resources and, and information for you up in the January, February issue of Parks and Travel magazine, and also up on nationalparktraveling.com. But Glenn, let's start with, you know, who wanted to come over to what would become America and why? Well, most of the people who came across on the Mayflower were being persecuted because of their religious beliefs. And they did go, a lot of them went from England to Holland because Holland was a little bit uh, easier to live in if you had different religious ideas. And then they decided that there was an opportunity to have a, a a new settlement in this new country. Mm. So they, they all got together and decided to sail across to America. And you were, you were talking about being in a canoe and on the river and that. And when, when you see how big the Mayflower was, you know, it, it was a little bit bigger than a canoe, but <laughs> the Mayflower was a much. tiny, <laughs> tiny little ship, you know, and they had all those people on board. And wow. It was not a very nice journey, I can't imagine, you know. Mm. Not only did they have people, but they had animals and, you know, 
So they would have taken everything they owned with them. And you know, it was not going to be a very pleasant journey. So but, I, I, my hat's definitely off to them. And this, mm. with them going, because they went to Holland, so they were trying to you know, flee religious persecution. Yes. So, in, so England was like, you will believe this. And that, was it like, you will believe, what was, go, was it like Catholic versus Protestant? Well, or what was, what was going on? Don't forget, we're talking just after Henry VIII and the dissolution of the monasteries in the sort of early 1500s. And then we talk about the getting out of the Catholic Church with the Protestantisms. And then the Protestants gave way again to the Catholic religion again. And then Elizabeth I came along and she put us back to Protestants. So there was a lot of toing and froing and, and it was a bit like, today I'm a Catholic, but tomorrow I'm going to be a Protestant because you just had to do as you were told. But Ooh. a lot of the people who were going to Holland in the early part of the 1600s, you're talking about King James here. Um, see, King James was King James I of England, but he was King James VI of Scotland. So we've then got the Scottish influence as well, the Scottish church. And a lot of people were then starting to think about the, the different ways of, of interpreting the Bible. They were looking at it a lot more detailed. And then you got the, the people who were more um, exact. They were reading the Bible as it was written and trying to do it by the letter. And then you had people who were a little bit more relaxed and it must have been a complete headache at the time. Mm. Wow. So people, wow. people went to Holland where it was a little bit easier and then they came back to England, picked up their friends and, and went off to America. Uh, Holly, when you think about here, they arrive here and then in, in Massachusetts and so basically we're in the Northeast and then, it, then they started to spread out, right? So that's where, when we start to dig into our roots, we obviously go to England, but on this side of the country, do we, we start looking in Massachusetts and then in the state surrounding? Well, when you're doing family history, you have to start with where you are and follow the generations back. But, but if you look at it from they arrived here on the, on the American continent, they did slowly spread out and move across. And they actually, the Mayflower landed in a place that it wasn't scheduled to land. And that's why they made the Mayflower, Mayflower Compact to set up their own little government. And so things, you know, they, they drifted a little bit off course and they landed farther north than they had expected. And, hmm. you know, all, Virginia was already there, right? It right. Was, the, the Jamestown settlement had started earlier. And um, so it, it really depends on how you hook in if you're if you if your family's here on the American continent long enough you could go anywhere depending on how how your family migrates out of there but but as people settle they usually slowly move out and around there are little schisms that happen that this group goes to Rhode Island and this group goes someplace else but it's mm -hmm. kind of fascinating to see how um, tolerant and intolerant we are of one another and it's, mm. it's all played out in the history of, of those early people that come to this land. Yeah, I, I always from, forget about Jamestown being there first. Yeah, so Jamestown's there first. And you've got all the explorers that came through too, you know, and then you've got Spain was still also like on this, on the Western yeah. side, right? We had Spain going on. And, um, and then you've got... Well, Spain was in Florida. Like, yeah. Yeah, Spain was in Florida first, St. Mm -hmm. Augustine. For, mm -hmm. for the European people, they... Um, Florida was actually the first settlement and then Jamestown and then then the Mayflower so it's very it's really interesting that so much focus is put on the pilgrims and all that the Puritan movement that we even in school children you, you often don't realize that there are other other things happened before that and, and of course so you have to be American. really careful you the Native American mm -hmm. culture that to me is like we forget you know when we think even Thanksgiving there's you know big discussion now it's like okay how do we celebrate thanksgiving because really 
the pilgrims weren't the first and neither, you know, <laughs> was Miles Standish, neither, uh, you know, it was the Native Americans here first. And now did I ruffle feathers anywhere on that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> speaking of <laughs> Thanksgiving, but yeah. you know, there's that yeah. part of it too, where we have to, this was like the new America. And, and so people were, it's like what happened in Africa. Everybody's like, oh, there's a continent. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go get it. <laughs> and I think- Well, Thanksgiving was actually, actually set up by President Abraham Lincoln hmm. many, many years after the fact. And it was during the war and he wanted to inspire people to have something to be grateful for during the Civil War. And of course they were, you know, the Confederacy was Confederate, right? They had, they had broken away and that's why Jamestown wasn't chosen. <laughs> Goes right back to England. Interesting. See, <laughs> Thanksgiving, right back to England again. <laughs> If you look at if you look at history, you know we in England at the moment we're going through lots of things about people moving into England and whether people mm -hmm. want them. But you know this whole world has been formed by people moving around, and you know so we we left England or these people left England in 1620 and settled in America, which actually belonged to or if a land can ever belong to anywhere but that was home to the people who already lived there but you know we were newcomers to america so as people come into this country today and and come into america today you know we've got to realize that this this is history repeating itself mm. you know we we are not doing anything new today everything has happened already you know so we we had people who were not being treated very well because of their religious beliefs so they went and settled somewhere else mm -hmm. and this is exactly what's happening today mm -hmm. you know people are moving to right. other places in the world because they are being persecuted by their for their religious beliefs and you know it's it's not new you know it's that's a lot of people don't realize that this has all happened 400 years ago 600 years ago a thousand years ago it's happened in history time and time again you know, so this this movement of people is not definitely not a new thing. No, it's not. And also, when they're also part of movement of people was also to is in development, right? Way back when, but we still have that now, where some states want people to move in there because that gives them financial gains for infrastructure and things like that. Like Vermont, Nancy didn't Vermont want yeah. people to move there? Yeah, they'll give you ten thousand dollars if you move there. Let's go. <laughs> How about that? Let's go. <laughs> so that kind of thing. I, they say their population, there's an um, age disparity there. So they really want younger people because apparently they have lots and lots of old people and no young people. So if you're <clears> under <throat> a certain age, you could have $10,000 to move. <laughs> well, wow. the, same, the same thing mm -hmm. happened to the, to the pilgrims because they actually were sponsored out there by companies in America who needed workers in the colonies. Mm. So, you know, th this is exactly the same thing. It's happening today, it happened in 1620. They needed people to, to work in America. So people went over and the pilgrims were just one group of, of many hundreds and thousands of people who were going there. You know, wow. so, it, and also the same thing happened to them that happens to people today when when they actually arrived in America, they found out that actually, the, you know, the, the, the streets of London weren't paved with gold, you know, in the streets mm -hmm. of America weren't paved with gold either, and they ended up working for <laughs> nothing, you know, but that, it's, this happens right. today. You know, it's yeah. not, it's not well, just- many Well, of, many of them died. They just didn't I, even survive that first, yeah. those first um, several years. I mean, they come and so many, passed away they couldn't it was such an adjustment mm. well i think we brought disease to the native americans and whatever diseases they had that we weren't used to we got yes. so i think there's a reason for you know a lot of early deaths and also the climate adjustment and different kinds of food for sure mm. and, and yeah, the, conditions yeah. on, the conditions on the ship were not very good either and yeah the water when they arrived you know, they had, when they arrived, they then had to build houses and, and you know, that, that obviously weren't very easy. And if you, weren't, if you weren't being fed properly, you know, how are you going to work 
manual labor mm -hmm. without food in your stomach, you know? Right. You know, when you talk about conditions of the, of the Mayflower, I know it started with the Speedwell, right? That was the initial boat. Yes. Which sounds yes. like it's a speedboat way back when, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, but they have a restored Mayflower II uh, is going to be in Boston Harbor in 2020. Um, right. There's a, a special maritime festival that's going to be taking place. It's a replica of the Mayflower. So if you want to see what it was like, this is a good idea. And I think when, especially if you've got an ancestor that was aboard the Mayflower to have that connection of, of them getting on that ship and coming across. I mean, this is the high seas to get here. Yeah. Um, and so this uh, celebration happens May 20th to, uh, uh, yeah, May 14th through the 19th, 2020. And um, it took three years to restore it, over $11 million uh, to restore this. And wow. it's going to be uh, sailing into Boston Harbor alongside the USS Constitution. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be yeah. a fantastic sight to see, won't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, Sir Francis uh, Drake's uh, ship, the Golden Hind. I only call it the Golden Hiney, but anyway. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> oopsie. But that, that <laughs> ship, apparently, I think it's the replica is in England, where you can go see it. I think it's in London, Glenn. Um, I'm not it could sure. could possibly be. I don't know. I don't go to London that much, actually. <laughs> no, he, he's like, I'm, I'm staying out of the city, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm exploring the, the other side of it. Uh, not my so, favorite place. Holly, uh, do you think yeah, that... Yeah, I think uh, to see the... I, I think to see the replicas is... I would encourage everyone that can have an opportunity to do that. Here in, in Utah, in Salt Lake City, you know, it's a, it's a big migration of people that came with the, with the LDS movement early, you know, in, in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. But many people came from the British Isles and Europe across the ocean. And we have a replica of, of one of the boats, you know, ships. And for us to, you know, you can actually walk into it and see how oh, big cool. the beds were for me. And I'm not that, I, I'm five foot five, but my feet hang over the edge of the bed. It's not tall enough for me to lay on. Wow. Uh, full, fully extended and you can't stand up and I know that people were smaller earlier you know they didn't have the food and their bodies just didn't grow as much as we do today but um, really to see and to comprehend the mammoth effort that it took for, mm -hmm. to people this country from Europe in those early I mean in just a few years from nothing to 20,000 people I mean in a short couple of years yeah. and then they just keep coming and coming and they're still coming today wow and our population to see if you read the those early census schedules of the, of the United States to see it just grows and grows and so so many through the immigration process and it's it's quite fascinating although the people that came on Mayflower were not immigrants they came as subjects of the crown i believe even though they left from holland they still hmm. were citizens of great britain yes hmm. most of them were, were still british and so when when you think about going and seeing the replica of the mayflower um also in in massachusetts I was, you know how we are about our parks i looked up that the pilgrim memorial state park uh, if you go there it's a waterfront park it's where you can see plymouth rock and um the Mayflower II mm -hmm. the Museum. So there's the Mayflower II, um, and over a million people go there every year, but you'll also be able to see Plymouth Harbor from there. There's a lot of monuments and also related parks, uh, Miles Standish State Forest, Miles Standish Monument State Reservation, and the National Monument to the Forefathers. And so like, there was like a lot of, lot, a lot happened at this time frame for, for uh, the new America, we should say. So there's places here we can, actually physically go to but Glenn isn't that something also happening over in England uh, where you know there's celebrations I know but I know that there's actual places that you went to this year uh, you had yes. some of your of your visitors come over that you took on on tours to their ancestral sites and yes. so there's places people can go in England to see where they were before they got to Holland and before they went on the Mayflower yeah I mean one of the one of the most interesting places was um, Gainsborough Hall um, and the hall itself is an absolutely gorgeous building it really is beautiful I've got I've sent you a couple of films hopefully you'll be able to put them on the website um, and the, the, the film that the the, uh, the hall itself is a magnificent building and that was lived in um, by William Hickman um, 
and he was one of the people who held some of these um, separatists meetings in his house because as they were not practicing the accepted worship they had to do it in secret and they were done in people's houses so he he allowed them to meet in secret in his house um, so i went to gainsborough old hall i also went to scrooby which is another little village and william brewster came from scrooby and he also allowed meetings to be held in his house wow. because you know again these all had to be done in secret and these mm -hmm. people these people had their their church meetings in houses and in barns in sheds wherever they could you know so you'd you'd let it be known this week the meeting's going to be in william brewster's house and people would just turn up um some of these people got arrested because obviously it was against the law and it was against the crown so it was it was a very very dangerous thing to do so by, by Glenn, sorry have, have you seen the priest pockets or the little um hideaways where they would hide people so oh, that when yeah. the authorities come yeah the um the, the priest holes were mainly for the catholics during the Henry VIII's time when he did away with the Catholics. So they would hide up their, their Catholic priests. And, and this, this was a very similar thing where if you was a Catholic during the Henry VIII's time when he, walked, when he moved away from Rome, you had to meet in private again. So the Henry VIII's time with the Catholics was very similar to the, the time when the separatists were moving um, to have their own services um, again, in private, but um, they didn't normally have priest holes for the separatists because actually they they were just people in in the in the normal run of the mill. They would they were like lay preachers rather than actual priests. Okay. Um, but they went okay. across to Holland in about 1607 and 1608, and then um, they sort of formed their own groups over in Holland and. Then in 1619, they decided they were going to go to America. And in 1620, they actually embarked on that massive journey, which, wow. again, must have been horrendous. <laughs> I, I, my, I yeah. really cannot get my head around leaving somewhere, even if you mm. weren't necessarily safe. But I cannot get my head around leaving wherever you are living to go to the unknown because it was completely unknown. It, you, you had a journey. They had no idea. <laughs> no. It, was, yeah. it was a journey you know, of ages and in a sea that they didn't know when they were gonna to come to an end. And it, they, well, it just beggars belief to me. Hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. funny, you know, me when is, the, no, I was gonna say it's it's really when you think about it, and it's all because they're not allowed to believe something that they believe. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it, it's the the kind of control efforts were amazing. Yeah, today I don't. Well, some people still really are like that; and they can't stand the idea of different religions, yeah. and other people really don't care. Yeah, yeah. I, to me, I, it's like whatever you do, as long as you're not hurting someone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's why we have freedom of religion. It's just as important as freedom of speech. You know, it's these, these you know, things that we have, the principles that we have now, um, to me are really, it, when you think about the sacrifices, you, in yeah. a way, you look at it. Because them coming over, not knowing, just really standing up for what they believe in. I talk about integrity and bravery. Yeah. I mean, it's, it really takes courage to do it. And even going to Holland is a different country, you know. Yes. Uh, so I wonder about if any, you know, because Holland's had some interesting history with this kind of thing, too. Even right now, there's some interesting things going on. Mm. Um, and when you think about, do you think anyone hopped on board and said, hey, I'm coming with you, you know, uh, on the Mayflower from Holland? Or do you think it was just all British? Out of the I, think they were, I think they were Dutch people as well, because the, the separatists went over to Holland in 1608 and they then they, they just intermingled with the mm -hmm. Dutch. So they they would have they would have picked up Dutch people as well. And they probably would have had Dutch servants in their houses. They would have they would have befriended the Dutch, because if you're going to live in a country for, you know, yeah. 10, 11, right. 12 years. That 
you know, you're going to have, you're going to have. That's one of the things. That's one of the things too. The New England Historic Society is has been um, backing this great migration project, project where all the people that come, they're identifying them who died, who actually made it, and up to tw- you know. For, for so many years. I mean, the Mayflower was the first ship, but they just kept coming and coming and coming. And they're trying to prove from what country they actually came from. And it's, it's quite a fascinating project. Mm. Yeah, you gave us the website for that. It's AmericanAncestors.org. Go in there and you'll find the Great Migration Study Project. It's a long, long link. Again, we'll have it up there for you on NationalParkTraveling.com. But it, to me, this is an interesting thing because you may be of Dutch descent, but not think that you your, your ancestors were on the Mayflower because you're of Dutch descent. You know what I mean? That's that those interesting mm-hmm. ties that you may not think, you know, was there like a book like, it, you know, here's the Mayflower book of people like from when they were it's there? volumes. So that's wow. that that list. It's volumes because it includes it includes um, their descendants. But there, but there are books, a lot of them. And there was more than one lot of journey people. over, right? There were more than one. Right. Yeah, so then it just the Mayflower keeps... went. The Mayflower actually went back to England. You know, the, the, thing that, the thing that a lot of us don't realize is that the ships that came over to America didn't just stay there. They, you know, they mm. were going backwards and forwards and, and people were going backwards and forwards. Mm. That was something else that until I started to actually research some of the American... Um, connections i didn't realize how many people actually came back to england you know i, huh. I, I just, I just oh, never well. thought i never thought about it you know they I mean, got like, here and said that's it i'm out of here <laughs> yeah i'm not doing that again <laughs> i mean some people just came back because they went to america for whatever reason and then they they came back it's, it's like um uh, john rolfe you know, he married mm-hmm. Pocahontas. He, he went to America, he, he married Pocahontas, and then he came back to England. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an amazing thing to think that they done that journey twice. You know, were, were they mad? Yeah, <laughs> they I don't mad, know. They were mad to go across in the first place, but would you then get on a boat again to go back? I, I, it really does I think it'd be a lot easier to go back than to come. Well, at least you, at least you know back. you're going back to a place yeah. with how with homes and and some civilization to come to the new world and there there's nowhere there's nowhere mm. yeah for comfort. Well, now, now I've got to think about Abraham Lincoln here because yeah. with his history. Well, I was just thinking about this. So he's the one going. Okay, we need to have a Thanksgiving and and all be nice to each other and understand gratitude and you know and be thankful. Like, hey, we made it. You know. So if his, I wonder where his ancestors, what ship they came in on. Do you know what I mean? Well, they, they, went, <laughs> yeah. they went over in, in 1633, I believe. See, this is, cool. so there's, so like there, you know, when you think about Jamestown and everything, so Jamestown's beforehand. So there was, you know, Americans here, like there were like, you know, the, the Anglo side, let's say. And mm. So they were there. So how much communication was going? Because there's, you know, the sponsors, like you were saying. So there yes. was some understanding and knowledge of America, the new America. Oh yes, yeah. So I mean, was that. There, but I there mean, was, there was communication between America and England because, like I say, the ships were going backwards and forwards. So and they had wine and rum. <laughs> and, yeah, and tobacco. And tobacco. That was important, right? That was important. But yeah, so 1633, if that was, you know, Lincoln's family coming over, that wasn't that long after the Mayflower. Yeah, it's, only, it's only 13 years. Right. And they, they, they came over in 1633 from Hingham and, um, and settled in Hingham. <laughs> that, that's the whole reason that Hingham in Massachusetts is called Hingham, because of Abraham Lincoln's group. Um, you know, the ancestors of Abraham Lincoln came over in a big group, again, because of um, religious persecution, um, they came over and founded Hingham in wow. Massachusetts, because they came from Hingham in Norfolk. Now, in, in when you go in, when mm. people come over to you, Glenn, yeah. um, you're talking about these places like Scrooby. Is that where yeah. Scrooby-Doo comes from? No. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you know, I'd, like, I'd like to think so. I, you know, so, so Scrooby, is that in your area? Uh, Scrooby's in sort of um, Lincolnshire, Yorkshire area. 
Is that okay. on the up on the east coast, further up? Okay. And um, so, what's in your backyard for for in regards to? Well, the uh, the Fullers came from Redenhall, the Fullers who were on the uh, on the Mayflower, I believe, um, and they are actually related to me. So I would, if anyone is related to the Fullers from uh, Redenhall and have had DNA done, I would really like them to connect to me to see whether we have anything in common because um, I've had my DNA done and it would be good to, uh, to see whether we are connected. Wow, and you yeah. never know, as we've learned on the yeah. show, you never know, yeah, yeah always mm -hmm. go. Now, Holly, do you think you have ancestors from the Mayflower? I'm sure of it, yeah. There's so many descendants and my, my ancestors, my mother's family come out of New England and um, I'm related to everyone, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there you go. Well, I, well, I have no clue, but you know, the way we travel around and don't, we're so nomadic, Nancy and I, I'm sure someone did something like that and got on a boat. I don't know. Oh, I just, well, duh, because probably. we have English ancestry as well, but I just feel like, and we probably would say I'm standing up for what I want to believe in, you know? So it, it's, it just shows the power of, of belief systems as well to me yes. about this is like what the power of what you believe in. Mm -hmm. and the strength of that and that's but it's also about what a whole family believes in you know yes it's, it's communities moving too so i think that that adds comfort to it but this is fascinating everybody there's so much going on in the states over in england uh holly you gave us a link mayflower 400 uk.org so everyone you can also look at that um boston.com just type in 400 anniversary of mayflower and you'll find it up on google i mean it's just it, this is going to be a huge year celebrating uh, mm -hmm. this voyage. And so also, again, a lot of events. yeah, a lot of events, a lot of events. And I think go to them because then you get this understanding. If you can, you know, go to them. Uh, Glenn, you're going to be taking people around in 2020 uh, to the different sites. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm actually considering putting together a, a bus tour because I didn't realize until I had the group over last year, earlier this year, I, I just didn't realize how much there was in, in this part of England. Mm. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking about putting a bus tour together. So, uh, you know, a, a whole group of people could come over and, and tour the, the main places. You know, obviously I can't go to every little village, but, um, you know, not with a tour like that. But, um, you know, the, the main areas would be good, especially places like Gainsborough, Gainsborough Old Hall, which is absolutely gorgeous. Mm. You, you could tie in your Abraham Lincoln connection, too, with well, Swanton actually, Morley. That's, yeah. That's, that, that, would, that would be something else. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, everyone, you can connect directly with Glenn on norfolk-tours.co.uk. Holly, on familyhistoryexpos.com. I know you do a lot of workshops and you have a lot of books and uh, worksheets and uh, such a, you know, a combination, a collection of resources. Is there anything specific? Do you have things for Northeast uh, that can help people uh, that are, are tracing their, their roots from that area? Yes, we have a whole series of um, online classes. They're on demand. You can, you can go look at them anytime on New England awesome. with all of the information to tell you how to do your family history research in England. New England and and work your way back to that um, time period. I, I know that when I went to Plymouth years ago, the first time I went there and I went to see the Plymouth Rock, I was so surprised at how small it was. <laughs> I expected it to be a huge <laughs> like a the huge Rosetta thing. Stone. They had a wire, <laughs> yeah, they had a wire cage around it so that no one could oh my steal God. it. I mean that that was oh. uh, or and so that the the ocean wouldn't wash it away because it was. That was surprising to me, I, but it, but uh, it's claimed to be the original rock, and kind of it's kind of cool to look at. It's the rock. Wow. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So everyone, and there's again, a lot of genealogy libraries there. You know, that's one of the reasons I went was to do research. And there's a lot of in the museums and libraries and archives, tons of records. It's kind of fun place to go. Check it out. As we say on the so, show, it's like it's more than being behind your computer for family history research. You got to get out too. Yeah. So. Are, exactly. Holly, are you related to the one passenger um, William Button? B U T T E N. You know, I, died, I am. He's like the only the, one who died I on have, the Mayflower. Uh, I have Button 
relative. I have a filing cabinet. Have I ever told you my button story? I have a filing cabinet full of buttons, um, four drawers full of mm. buttons of America, the button families of America. My particular line, I go back to Zebulon Button in the 1700s, and we're not able to prove his, the next generation. Mm. So I'm sure it goes back, but he, but they're there in New England. And um, mm. Mm. yeah. Hey, Glenn, is there any buttons in your neighborhood? Um, no, not as far as I can think, apart from the ones on my shirt. I know. She's like, I've got four drawers of buttons. I'm like, what? Is that through the depression? She's Did you got say a collection. That? Yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. The I buttons. know. I had a friend. I had a friend mm -hmm. stop in once. She sews, and she she saw this uh, label on the drawer, the top drawer of it, and it says buttons. And she goes, Oh, can I see your buttons? And I'm <laughs> like, Okay. You know, I opened the drawer, and she looked at all these little labels of you know the different names and she's and she just goes her her shoulders dropped and she just goes oh i thought you had buttons <laughs> it was so cute. she well, made me a necklace later she she made me a necklace that she crocheted out of buttons and she said this is in memory of your button research <laughs> that's funny so i have a i have a button necklace now that's really pretty actually that's cool <laughs> we met a button in florence colorado robin mm -hmm. button yeah, yeah, that they're my relatives. Those buttons are my relatives. See, this is like wherever we go, like someone's related to someone. This again, yep. we always talk about there's a connection somewhere. So, mm -hmm. uh, just keep looking. Don't you know? That's the thing. Don't just close off any. Like, don't you? You can't. Um, when you're doing family history research, you know, you may go, "Oh no, that won't work. Oh, that wouldn't have happened." But the reality is, it really could have. You know what I mean? So you got to look down every alleyway basically when you're doing this because it right. just the unexpected mm -hmm. happens all the time thank you all for joining us thank you holly thank you glenn uh, everyone you can go to bigblendradio.com to keep up with our shows we are monday wednesday friday sunday except for holidays major holidays uh, but we always love to play music and this is uh dedicated to all on the mayflower uh, all the ancestors uh, who came through uh, this is a song from the Walkabout Band, and they're, connect they're connected between Australia and, Eng um, and New York. So there you go. I think this is close enough, right, Glenn? Because the, the yeah. Australian, we've got to do that one yeah. day, the Australian family history, uh, especially yeah. between England and in Australia. But this song, and because the uh, Daryl, uh, Sully, <laughs> the, the, who goes around and, and comes from Australia, the, a lot of their music is inspired by boats and, and sailing. <laughs> so uh, this one is called Fortune Favors the Brave. And you can keep up with the walkabout at walkaboutband.com. Thanks so much, Holly and Glenn. You take care. Bye. Happy Christmas. Thank you. See you Happy soon. Happy Christmas to you too. Yeah.